Welcome to the House of Hoop, another great segment lined up, brought to you by House Edge Media and my great producer, Tyler McLaren. It is March Madness, no better time if you're a Hoop fan. We've crowned some offset provincial high school championships. We've got the, the CIS is in the books with the Carlton winning their 11th, the 13th. And now, well, no one can deny how critical it is. With March, the real March Madness beginning uh, uh, this week, uh, Thursday, tips off. 64 teams now. Uh, we're going to crown a national championship down south. And I brought a good friend of mine in, Pete Yiannopoulos. You can see him on RDS. You can hear him on TSN Montreal Radio. A great hoops analyst. He breaks stuff down. So if you got your brackets, put them up right now because we're talking NCAA. Pete, thanks for joining me. Hey, Tony. Uh, good afternoon, and it's always a pleasure to be on your show. You know what? Does it get any better than this? I mean, uh, if you look back, and just before we get to the brackets, I mean, I, I, I go back to, you know, where I got started. We're probably roughly the same age. The Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Michigan State, Indiana State. That one was really sort of the kind of that coming out of the NCAA, don't you think? No, there's no question about it. Uh, you know, Magic was uh, one of my heroes growing up in that that epic matchup with Bird, I think, really transcended and revolutionized uh, basketball to where it is today, right? Everybody's talking about it. There's countless shows and, and social media and, and TV networks. And uh, the March Madness hype continues because of those two guys. And it continued with great basketball in the 80s. I remember watching Danny Manning in 1988 with Kansas defeating Oklahoma and, and the great teams from UNLV when they beat Duke 103-73 in 1990. How can you forget about that? <laughs> to 91, the rematch, UNLV was undefeated. Probably the best team they ever had, but lost to Duke, Christian Leitner and Bobby Hurley in the semifinal. Uh, and then Fat Five with Michigan and all the great North Carolina teams. And uh, the UConn started coming up. Jim Beheim finally won a national championship in 2003. Here we are. Today, Tony and Kentucky's undefeated, 34 and 0. Can they be the next Indiana Hoosiers of 1976 and run the table? I am excited. Yeah, I know, yeah and I can hear it in your voice. And a great segue. Why don't we? Why don't we start breaking things down? And you talked about just some terrific memories, uh, you know, going forward. And I'm sure there's going to be some memories created in this tournament. And why don't Why don't we start with that Midwest bracket? I got it right here. Uh, let's talk about the Kentucky Wildcats. You mentioned the undefeated season. You know, part of me is like wishing that you know what? Let's 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 get to some history here. And, I, and I'm filling out brackets it's going I don't know if there's a team in the tournament that can beat them but let's talk about the Midwest and uh, and, and what your thoughts are no there's absolutely right when you start with that Midwest bracket it starts and I think it ultimately ends with Kentucky 34 no uh, I think that again it's going to be difficult to beat Kentucky it's going to be difficult to stay competitive with Kentucky just because of the overall depth that they have and they provide uh, Calipari is able to put out virtually two teams uh, into one, but that overall depth and quality, I think that when you look at, you know, their starting lineup, you know, um, it's it's imperative that guys like Willie Cauley-Stein and Carl Anthony Toms are engaged, uh, but they're able to really uh, dominate the floor defensively, and it's really tough to score against Kentucky. You have the Harrison Twins. They look like experienced players, but they're only in their second year, right? So it's incredible. They got Ulis who could back up the point guard, and they got the great Canadian, right, Trey Lyles from, from Saskatoon. Uh, you know, we don't only produce great hockey players in Saskatchewan, Tony. We produce great ball players as well. Uh, but I think that bracket, I think if you look at it, you know, if Maryland could get by and, and potentially meet them in a Sweet 16, they got Des Wells, they got Mellow Triple, they got guys that could score, uh, they can break you down. If they can rebound the basketball, that's going to be the key for any team versus Kentucky. Um, you know, I'm intrigued to see what happens on the lower part of the bracket. You know, Kansas, uh, they don't have Cliff Alexander. He's out uh, for eligibility issues, but they have a team that has some experience, have some depth. Uh, them and Notre Dame, right, if one of those two teams can get there, and I think Notre Dame won the ACC tournament, are they legitimate enough to really compete and try and ultimately beat Kentucky? It remains to be seen, but I think if you look at top to down, 
uh, I think that this is Kentucky you should be going to the Final Four relatively easily. Yeah, I have to agree. Just the, and you talked about the depth; they just come at you in waves, and they just seem like they're a team of destiny and they're on a mission. But you got to win six games, right? So we'll see one at a time. But I agree. I got I got Kentucky coming out. I got them beating Notre Dame in the, in the Elite Eight. So uh, um, you know, again, those are all great points. Uh, let's move down to the West. Uh, what, are you, what are you thinking on the West as far as uh, it playing itself out? Well, it's interesting, right? When you look at the bracket that came out, I absolutely love Wisconsin and what they were able to do, 31 wins and three losses. You know, they made the Final Four last year. Uh, they lost a heartbreaker to Kentucky uh, where they could have won that game and got to the national final. But Bo Ryan has been the level of consistency. They got a fourth-year senior, seven-footer, and Frank Zetang Kaminsky. We all love him, just his versatility and, and what he brings to the floor. And this is great in terms for a college basketball student athlete. He's grown, he's developed, he's matured. And I think he's the ultimate leader of that team and well-deserved winning the Big Ten Conference, right, the regular season and the postseason title, which is extremely difficult to do. You know that. Tony. But I think that with them, they're really matched up again with the two seed Arizona Wildcats last year. That matchup in the Elite Eight went down to the wire. Nick Johnson missed a shot, uh, and Wisconsin got to the Final Four. So you know that Sean Miller's trying to get to his first Final Four as a head coach. Arizona with Stanley Johnson, incredible athlete, one of the best freshmen in the country. If they can get by a team with Baylor, I like them at the three seed. Montreal zones, Kenny Cherie's had an outstanding season this year. Second team all Big 12. So I think that uh, Baylor in Arizona looks like a great matchup. I think VCU in Ohio State is going to be a great matchup in terms of that 7-10. I think that with VCU losing Briante Weber, their point guard and all-time leader in steals, I think that's going to be difficult to beat Ohio State. D'Angelo Russell, one of the best freshmen in the country. But I think that this bracket really, uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see Wisconsin match up with Arizona again in an epic Elite Eight. Uh, but anything can happen. There's some good teams out there. Oregon, Oklahoma State, that 8-9 game is going to be interesting. Dylan Brooks over at Oregon, another Canadian who's had a great year. So uh, let's see what transpires. One team, though, Tony, that's really, you don't quite know what they're going to give you on a nightly basis. But North Carolina as a four seed might be a little bit difficult for Wisconsin just because of their athleticism, their youth, and their ability to push the ball. Uh, they made a good run to the ACC final. So North Carolina is a four seed, very dangerous. They can get upset rather quickly, or they could you know, win about three, four games to get to the final four as well. So that should be very telling and interesting. Yeah, no, I was just going to ask you, lots of Tar Heel fans, but you've covered that bracket. I've got Wisconsin, Arizona in that Elite Eight with Arizona going on. But as I said, that's, uh, you know, Wisconsin. I think there's, if, it's one, if there's a couple teams that can give Kentucky a run, it would be sort of an experienced Badger team. Uh, but, again, that's uh, yet to be seen. So uh, great stuff about the West. Let's move to the East. A lot of experts uh, feel that Villanova is, uh, is susceptible early and, uh, and not a very strong number one seed. No, you're right, and it's unfortunate because Jay Wright and that veteran team, a lot of sophomores, juniors, and some seniors, they play basketball the right way. There's no uh, superstar. There's no lottery pick on that team. Obviously, uh, from a Canadian span uh, standpoint, Dylan Ennis has had a great year, uh, but this is a team that plays the right way. They play in-your-face defense. Um, they don't give you easy looks on the defensive end, and they share the ball on offense. Obviously, they like to dribble drive and try and get to the cup. Uh, but again, uh, do they deserve to be a number one seed? I think, you know, if you look at their body of work, 32 wins, only two losses, right? But when you talk about strength of schedule and their conference being a little bit weaker than some of the others, if they would have played in the Big 12 or in the ACC, they probably would have had a couple of more losses. But that's not their fault, right? So I think the committee, in terms of putting Virginia as the two seed, I think they got it right. I like Virginia as a number one seed throughout the whole year. And even though they had that injury to their best score, Justin Anderson, uh, who broke his left hand, uh, he's come back in the ACC tournament not 100%. So I'm not quite sure what's to be expected with him and, and what's that going to do, how they're going to leverage and consolidate their efforts in terms of getting Anderson back on track. But if you would flip Virginia and Villanova 1-2, it would be the, probably the same thing. So, uh, But, uh, you know, if they get to play in North Carolina State, uh, in that second round, and North Carolina State has a lot of great guard play. So I think that you're right when you talk about susceptibility. Um, Villanova could either lose in that second round, or they could use that and, and try and rally around that cry that nobody believes in them and make a deep run. That's the beauty about the NCAA tournament. So uh, interesting that Louisville is there, Tony. I know that you know the cards and your man Rick Pitino. So uh, interesting what 
Louisville will be able to do as a four seed. Uh, you know, they lost Jones for the year. They dismissed him from the program. Is Rozier good enough uh, and consistent enough from the perimeter? You know, they got Montrez Harrell, who's a dominant post player inside. What has Rick Pitino up his sleeve? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Underrated Oklahoma team as well as a three seed. But, uh, you know, Michigan State, Virginia, second round. That could be <laughs> outstanding. Yeah. Tom Izzo, yeah. Tony. That's Tom it. Izzo, baby. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's, that's exactly it, is that uh, you have a few uh, guys that are, you know, knocking on the door, as you mentioned, NC, NC State, LSU in that second round, Villanova. Uh, you know, obviously Rick Pitino can wave his magic wand, do some good coaching, and, and and, and top of Villanova, and as you mentioned, that Michigan State team, uh, you know, playing uh, Virginia in the second round. What a game that is. And talking about some impact Canadians, you mentioned Ennis Cherry. Uh, we've got our own Ottawa's Mariel Shayok playing some really good minutes for Virginia. So uh, let's keep our fingers crossed uh, that, uh, you know, they'll be able to, uh, to perform. So I've got Virginia Villanova with Virginia going onward. Uh, let's move down to the final bracket, the South. Uh, you know, some interesting, interesting uh, scenarios there. Uh, you know, a lot of people are even looking at, uh, you know, Stephen F. Austin as a, as a 12 seed that can maybe steal a few games. No, you're right, Tony. Again, uh, when you talk about the NCAA tournament, you're looking at it and who are going to be the upsets. And you look back traditionally and historically, that 12 seed, every single year there's a 12 seed that upsets a 5 seed. And we've seen Stephen and Austin do it in the past. It looks like they'll be able to do it. Utah is a great team, though. Uh, they've gone into uh, Pac-12 play. Um, they have a lot of leadership. Uh, the kid Wright is an outstanding point guard. So um, that's going to be a game that's going to be going up and down. Who's going to control tempo? Who's going to be able to make big shots? Obviously, you look at Duke being number one. Um, they got the quality. They got the star power. Jalil Okafor, Tyus Jones, um, just outstanding. I think the guy, the most important player for Duke, though, is, is uh, Quinn Cook. He's the guy that could really hit those big shots and, and shoot from the perimeter and hit those three-point uh, bombs. And I think that when he's on target, they're very tough to beat. Obviously, they dismiss Rashid Suleiman. They don't have the depth and quality that they've had in the past. That's why Mike Krzyzewski really plays six and seven guys max. So they're going to have to really leverage those media timeouts. And um, will they be uh, energized? Or will they be uh, uh, tired towards the end of games if they match up with potentially teams that are a lot more deeper uh, than they are? We talk about Kentucky. We talk about some of the teams like Virginia, obviously Wisconsin, Arizona. But this bracket, I think it breaks down and boils down to what is Gonzaga going to do? Tony, you know Mark Few, you know the tradition. The first ever Canadian played for me, Pierre uh, Marie Alto or Cespedes. I remember being at the ABCD camp in 2003, and I went up to Bill Greer, the assistant coach, and Mark Few, and I told them, hey, uh, my point guard loves Gonzaga and loves your team. And they, they watched the play, they signed him, and look at the fury, look at all the Canadians that have gone there. Kevin Pangos, Kyle Wilcher, the dynamic Canadian duo. I think that this is the year that's going to be make or break for Mark Few. Gonzaga has never been to a Final Four. Uh, they were always the Cinderella team, the top major major program. But we've seen, Tony, over the last couple of years, teams like George Mason, teams like VCU, teams like Butler, they've gone to the Final Four, and Gonzaga has it. Can they overcome that? Um, they might play, face a tough day. <coughs> the team. Iowa State is there as well. Man, the Bulldogs, <laughs> Gonzaga, let's see what they could do. It would be great if Gonzaga plays Duke in Elite late. That would be yeah. spectacular. Well, not, not really because I've got Iowa State knocking them off, Pete. Uh, I just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're playing great basketball. They've got balance. They've got five players uh, scoring in double digits. I think Iowa State I've actually got in my final four. But, no, you know what? As a, as a Canadian, a proud Canadian, uh, you know, Kevin Pangos and Mr. Wilcher, they're, they're going to bang away. And, and, and maybe Gonzaga will get it done. But that's outstanding. Uh, uh, really appreciate it. If you had to look at some sleeper teams, I know we know the big big boys uh, uh what are some sleeper teams and some sleeper picks that you've got yeah no you're absolutely right tony when you look at the tournament um it's tough being a favorite it's tough uh, winning those games because it's it's a game seven it's one and done and anything can happen and you have these magical moments that those one shining moments and you know we talked about albany getting into the tournament and that kid hitting that spectacular three-point shot uh to win the game everything he's overcome the adversity of losing his mother to cancer but uh, I think that every team believes that they could win I don't think that um, there's anybody that is going to have that doubt in their mind 
But again, when you talk about some sleeper picks, I love Northern Iowa as a five seed. Uh, they've won 30 games this year, 30 and three. Ben Jacobson, a good friend of mine, has done an outstanding job. They've been going toe to toe with Wichita State, so they got a tough bracket there facing Wyoming, a 12 seed. But I think that Northern Iowa. They have the depth, they have that senior leadership, they have the quality, and they got excellent coaching that they can make a potential run there. So if they get by Wyoming, I think that they could take down a Louisville team as well. Um, you look at teams like, you know, Wichita State as a seven seed. Uh, you know, they're facing Indiana, and that's going to be an intriguing matchup. I think both those teams, uh, specifically Wichita State, if they're able to get by an Indiana team that shoots a lot of three-point shots, um, they'll be able to face a Kansas team that has to get through our Canadian boys and Paul Weir, New Mexico State. State, but Kansas is vulnerable. Uh, I like Wichita State advancing to that Sweet 16. They got that championship pedigree. They've gone to the Final Four. Um, you know, they're a team to watch out for. I think a team like Xavier, somebody that you could have to watch out for as well. Uh, they've won 21 games. Uh, you know, extremely well coached with Chris Mag. They'll play a team, Ole Miss, that beat BYU down 17 points at the half. But Ole Miss will be difficult as well. They can make a potential run. I think a team like Texas, right, is over. Uh, you know, been overrated most of the year. They had Iowa State up by 10, and then they lost that game in the Big 12 tournament. I think they got some to prove. So, um, going to be interesting. Look out for Buffalo as well. Buffalo 12 seed against Virginia. Bobby Hurley takes over for the Buffalo program after 14 years. Reggie Weatherspoon. We know the pedigree that Bobby Hurley has. That Buffalo team, 23 wins, nine losses. They got a couple of Canadians there as well. So watch out for Buffalo. They're a team that could potentially make a deep run as well. So a lot of teams with a lot of quality. They believe in themselves. Look out for SMU as well. Uh, extremely well coached with Larry Brown, Tim Jankovic, the associate head coach. Man, Tony, anybody could beat anybody uh, uh, during uh, this tournament starting uh, last night and up until the weekend. That's March Madness. Uh, just before I let you go, uh, I got to ask, I mean, basketball in Canada, it's blowing up. We obviously have uh, just such a great presence now in the NBA with some top Canadians. Uh, let's talk about some in the tournament. We mentioned some already. Uh, maybe mention some of the ones that you expect big performances from for their programs. Y'all, you, you know, you look at a guy who has experience, who's performed at the big stage, and you look at Dyshawn Pierre from the University of Dayton, right? They made a magical run to the uh, Elite Eight last year, and I think that this year they got still a lot more experience. They're going to have to get by a tough Boise State team, but I think that Pierre, somebody is very versatile, uh, you know, six foot seven, could score, could rebound, could facilitate, could distribute. I really like what he can bring to the table uh, for his Dane team. I think another guy, player to watch out for, a little bit underrated, a Montrealer. Uh, I know we spoke about Kenny Sheree and what he's done for Baylor, and he's been outstanding. But look out for Valparaiso uh, and Tavon Walker, first year player, freshman, uh, played at Vanier College, played for Brookwood Elite in the AU program. Uh, they they faced Maryland. I know that Maryland has a lot of experience, and they can make a deep run, but Valparaiso. Rezo attacks the basket. They play high tempo. And Devon Walker, another versatile player. He's had a great freshman year in the Horizon Conference. So uh, an abundance of Canadians. You know, Trey Lyle's going to try and do his thing with Kentucky. I think, you know, we already mentioned Gonzaga and Pangos and Wiltshire. Uh, 29 in total, and it's great. Uh, that they just keep coming down the pipeline. Uh, you mentioned Shyock. I think that he's going to have to step up if Justin Anderson is not at 100%. I've done a lot of Virginia games this year on TV for RDS. I love what he brings to the table. you got to shout out the Ottawa boys. Tony House, the man, <laughs> the myth, the legend. Ottawa boy, your uh, check's in the mail. It. Hey, before I, let, <laughs> before I let you go, have you filled your brackets out yet, finally? Uh, I will be doing that yeah. this evening. Okay. Uh, you know, sometimes I like to just yep. go about it and, and go off the cuff. I've been doing a little bit of research on some of the teams that I've been able to see. Uh, I'll have my bracket filled out tonight, and I'll be posting my final four picks on Twitter. Right. Uh, so you can follow me there, and definitely uh, looking forward to chatting with you off air, as we always do, Tony. Uh, just a great time of basketball. And great shout-out, you know, Ottawa U, Carlton, great final. Not as great in terms of the score, but a uh, great season. And CIA Hoops uh, growing. A lot of good products and players coming, developing from the Ottawa region, Montreal region across Canada. Tony, uh, you've been here for a number of years, and I feel fortunate enough uh, that we could do this together on air and on your show. Thank you. Bl blessed to be Canadian. Blessed to be in Ottawa. We've seen some great basketball over the years, and we're all trying to just promote the game, promote our own, and I think we can all uh, kind of pat ourselves on the back. Really appreciate the time, Pete, and uh, we'll be in touch, and good luck with everything. 
Thank you again. We'll do this soon. We oui, papa, Tony. Have a great one. You too. And that was uh, Pete Yiannopoulos. Really appreciate his time. And just before we go, I want to preface this. I've never won a pool before, but I'm going to give you my final four. Kentucky, Arizona, Virginia, Iowa State. And I've got uh, Kentucky over Iowa State in the finals. Don't take it to the bank, but anyways, for what it's worth. Appreciate your time, and we'll, uh, hey, always a pleasure with the House of Hoop. We'll see you again.